the world has begun to experience its largest traffic congestion. As part of an effort to take a shortcut, more than 150 cargo ships are currently waiting for their turn to transit through the Panama Canal. It is interesting to note that the authorities refuse to allow this to happen, despite the fact that every ship is willing to pay the Panamanian government $0.4 million in order to pass through the Panama Canal. The authorities are not performing any repairs or improvements to the canal, nor is the canal's route closed for any other reason. On the other hand, the engineering masterpiece that is the Panama Canal, which is a source of pride for the entire world, is currently dealing with a huge crisis, a battle that isn't against anybody but nature itself. Across the globe, cargo ships can take two different routes. The Egyptians constructed the Suez Canal, connecting East Asian countries like China, Japan, Taiwan, and Singapore to Europe. Similarly, cargo ships from these nations use the Canal of Panama, located in Central America, as a shortcut when sailing to East America, East Canada, or when they need to travel from Europe to West America. The world is home to approximately 50,000 cargo ships, and 70% of those ships make use of these two shortcuts. To put it another way, if there is any kind of problem with these two shortcuts, the Suez Canal and the Panama Canal, it will have a tremendous influence on the entire globe, as we have already seen in the past. If a situation similar to the one that occurred in 2021, when the ever-given ship shut down the entire Suez Canal for six days, arises in the future, the ships will have to traverse the entire length of the ocean, leading to increased time and fuel expenses. The ultimate responsibility for paying this additional expense lies with both myself and you as a final user. However, shipping corporations must pay a substantial toll tax to the authorities overseeing the canal in order to use these shortcuts. However, the crucial question remains, why is a canal necessary? A ship that originates in the United Kingdom, which is located in Europe, needs to get to San Francisco, which is located in Western America. It is now feasible for this ship to find itself at its objective in the following manners. Either it will travel over the entirety of the North Atlantic Ocean, traverse the bottom of Cape Horn in South America, reach the Pacific Ocean, and then proceed to San Francisco from there. Given that this whole distance is greater than 15,500 miles, the ship will need to spend a total of 28 days and gasoline in order to complete it. The shipping corporation will not only suffer a loss of time, but will also incur extra expenses of $32 million for fuel. The second path goes straight from the United Kingdom to the Caribbean Sea, and then it takes a short cut through the Panama Canal to reach the Pacific Ocean. And finally, it arrives in San Francisco. The first route required a journey of 15,500 miles, but the Panama Canal reduces this distance to just 8,700 miles, resulting in a 44% decrease. Because of the Panama Canal, the shipping corporation is able to save over $14 million, which is nearly half of the cost of gasoline. It is possible that you believe that ships like to pass via this location because they are able to save more money when they go through the Panama Canal. Nevertheless, this is not the genuine case. Currently, a ship traveling via the Panama Canal must pay a toll tax 
of approximately $0.4 million. However, there are instances in which the cost can go to between $0.8 million and $1 million. And even in those cases, the ships cheerfully pay this amount. One of the most significant benefits of using the canal is the time it saves. If the ships take 15 or 20 days longer on each route, the ship that operates 24 times per year on one route will only operate 12 times, and as a result, they will have 50% fewer bookings. To put it another way, time is money. And in order to save time, shipping corporations pay the required amount of money to transit through the Panama Canal. This is true regardless of whether they have to wait in line for five or ten days, or even if they have to deal with the wrath of the Canal Authority. The Panama Canal Authority is currently unable to permit additional ships to sail through the canal, despite the fact that they would like to do so. What is the problem here? We need to have a solid understanding of the operation of the Panama Canal before we know it. The person who was responsible for the creation of this engineering masterpiece was certainly brilliant, but not so brilliant that he could face out against nature. An examination of the Panama Strip reveals that it is a land strip in Central America that is 18 miles wide and has oceans on both ends. It is not possible to develop a canal like the one in Suez since the ground here is 30 meters above sea level. Instead of that, ships are required to first ascend to the floor of Lake Garten and then descend to the sea on another coast. There are cargo ships that carry millions of tons, and we are talking about them. Locks at the canal's entrance can lift such massive vessels to a height of 30 meters. These locks function similarly to ladders in order to raise the ship. The first step involves opening the door to lock number one and then placing the ship inside. When the door to lock number one closes, water flows from lock number two to lock number one. Lock number one is the first lock. Due to the fact that gravity naturally brings the high water level in lock number two down, this technique does not require the use of a motor or pump. The ship will move to lock number two after the water levels in both locks have reached a state of balance. We will accomplish this by opening the middle door and then closing it from behind. Following a similar pattern, the ship moves after the water releases from lock number three to lock number two. Lock number three's door closes, allowing water from Gartoon Lake to fill it. This brings the water level in lock number three up to the same level as the water level in Gartoon Lake. The ship is now approaching Gartoon Lake after opening the final door. During this procedure, which takes 10 to 15 minutes, the ship rises by 30 meters. When the ship has completed its journey through Lake Gatun, it will take 11 hours for it to arrive at the other coast of Panama. The ship will find the same locks there, allowing it to descend to 30 meters below sea level. The operation of raising and lowering the ship utilizes the water from Lake Gatun. Lock number one discharges its water into the ocean, matching the ocean's water level. Meanwhile, the lake discharges its fresh water into the ocean. For drinking purposes and for operating the locks of the Panama Canal, the people of Panama make use of the waters of Lake Garton, 
A single ship using the Panama Canal extracts the same amount of water from Lake Garten as half a million people use daily. While the Panama Canal is at its busiest, 38 ships pass through it every single day, which results in the release of water from an average of 19 million people into the ocean in a single day. An incredibly massive lake, Lake Gatun is almost as big as a typical city in terms of its size. Rainwater from the surrounding mountains collects in Lake Gatun, continuously replenishing the depleted water supply due to ship activity. Nobody anticipated a decline in Lake Gatun's rainwater levels during the construction of the Panama Canal 110 years ago, and this issue is currently causing tension within the Panamanian government. It is true that there is a wave that occurs approximately every seven years in which the amount of rainfall in the region of Panama drops to an extremely low level. It received very little rainfall in 2023, and the weather department forecasts that there will be even less rain in 2024. This situation is becoming more severe with each passing year, and it has reached a stage where there will be little rain in 2024. Considering these conditions, the authorities in Panama have only two options. They can either operate the canal or ensure their population has access to drinking water. It is possible that closing the canals will have a detrimental influence on revenue, while opening them may result in problems with drinking water. Even with pumps, adding seawater to Lake Gatun would simplify canal operations, but the resulting salty water would render the lake unfit for human consumption. In order to preserve the water in Lake Gatun, the government has recently begun to implement a number of steps. First, the government has reduced the number of ships allowed to pass through the canal in a single day from 38 to 18, and only permits cargo ships with fewer containers to use the facility. The more weight the ships carry, the more water they waste. Due to the fact that these ships are carrying up to 40% less freight on each ship, the overall number of ships that are traveling through Panama continues to rise. A line of ships currently surrounds the Panama Canal, waiting for their turn to pass through. Users who fail to make reservations in advance are subject to a wait time of 15 days. The freshwater surcharge, which is a 10% toll tax, has caused substantial problems on the routes that connect Europe to West America and East America to East Asia. This is a supplement to the recent strict measures. The manufacturing plant now makes reservations for the Panama Canal three months in advance to ensure timely delivery of the items it manufactures. This is because the cargo is suffering delays. Even before the production process begins, it is required to arrange bookings for vessels that will travel via the Panama Canal. At this time, numerous suggestions have been presented in order to find a solution to this problem at huge expense. They intend to incorporate the corridor that runs through the Bay of Asia into their plans. First, ships will unload cargo on one coast, then load it into a truck or rail for transit to the other shore. And finally, they will reload cargo onto other ships. Although this choice is highly beneficial, the challenge lies in the massive mountain ranges that dominate the western region of South America, arranged in a wall-like structure. With a total length of 5,590 miles, the Andes mountain range serves as the longest mountain range in the entire area. Because of this, 
it is not possible to construct a road network or a rail track in between. Mexico is in the process of creating a corridor that is only 118 miles long and borders the ocean on both sides. North America will be the location of this corridor. The Mexican government plans to build a rail network in the middle of the border to construct modern ports on both sides at an estimated cost of $2.85 billion. Upon completion, this project will surpass the Panama Canal in terms of speed and overall efficiency. Once the construction is complete, this location will have the capacity to handle 1.3 million containers annually. We predict that Mexico's interoceanic corridor will redirect half of Panama's load in six years, compared to the 2.6 million containers that pass through the Panama Canal annually under normal operations. Through the expansion of a highly promising network, Mexico is bringing this project from coast to coast, exceeding other possibilities in the process. They plan to initiate a similar project in Colombia, located near Panama, to expand the train network from coast to coast. On the other hand, we anticipate that it will take a number of years to finish this project. There is no doubt that the future of the Panama Canal is obvious to every single person on the planet. The rains will begin to fall once again, and the canal will continue to function at its maximum capacity, but until when? Climate change is an undeniable fact that no one can halt. A lack of rainfall could potentially shut down the canal in the future. I really hope that you will love this video and that you will share it with others. Thank you.